Amy and I were heading out of Badlands National Park and out of the state of South Dakota when out of the corner of our eye we spotted this big red barn. Well, it wasn't rectangular, it wasn't square like most barns I've seen. It was round, so that's what caught my eye. Well, actually the gas station right in front of it caught my eye first because I had just looked down a couple of minutes earlier and saw that we were running low on fuel. So there's this big red barn and both of our heads just turned that way and looking at it like, what is that? And as we pass the red barn, we see this huge western town that's set up behind, that runs parallel behind the barn for, I don't know, many, many acres. Then Amy says, that must be the place that Dan told us about. And I look at her and I'm like, 1880 town? She's like, yeah. I said, the one where they film Dance with Wolves or they have props or something from the movie? And she's like, yeah, that's the one. So I looked at Amy with the saddest puppy dog eyes I have. Like a kid that wants some candy or a toy at the store, begging his parents. But it turns out, Amy loved the town just as much as me. And it didn't take much convincing. I knew that we had uh, probably five or six hours to go on our travels for the day. I knew that Amy had the Corn Palace, which was in Mitchell, South Dakota, hours away from where we're at. That's what we were really in a hurry for, because she had to get that checked off her bucket list. There was no way we were leaving South Dakota without seeing the Corn Palace. And I knew um, we were running short on time if we wanted to get to our campsite. But, believe it or not, Amy says, you know what, why not? Let's go, let's go see it. If you really want to, turn around, let's go. But as we go up on the front porch to this big red barn, I noticed that it had 14 sides. So it's 14 different sides. I later learned that this was in the 1800s, they made the barns this way. They didn't make them rectangular or square. They made them round because it was cheaper because they cut out on materials they had to use for the barn. This little Western town attraction is located at 24280 South Dakota Highway 63 in Belvedere, South Dakota. A guy by the name of Richard Hollinger bought 14 acres of land in this area in 1969. At the time he purchased it, he had, he had no plans, no future ideas that it would become this huge attraction, 1880 town that it is today, which is awesome by the way. In 1972, a gas station was built at the same location. The idea started formulating for Richard Hollinger to create this western town. One of the main reasons that this came about, this idea, was the movie Dances with Wolves. So he purchased an additional 80 acres of land. In 1989, a big movie production company came to the area and started filming this movie, Dances with Wolves. They filmed it in the Badlands National Park, areas within the Black Hills of South Dakota, and numerous other places nearby where 1880 Town is today. As part of the movie production, the company built this huge Main Street set filled with like relics and things of Native Americans and, you know, history. And they borrowed a lot from a guy named Clarence Hollinger, which was Richard's father. At only 35 years of age at the time, actor Kevin Costner would take on the lead role as Lieutenant Dunbar. John J. Dunbar of the Union Army. Not only would he be the leading star in the movie Dances with Wolves, but he would also direct it and be a co-producer. If you've never seen the movie Dances with Wolves, it's fantastic. It's one of my favorite. I think I've watched it so many times. I remember having the old VHS copy of it. It was like two VHS tapes and one little box set. And I've probably watched the movie now at age 49, maybe 30 times in my lifetime. I don't know if that's a lot to watch a movie, but that's how much I like the movie and Kevin Costner's films. Dances with Wolves is a three hour movie. It's a long movie and it's about uh, Lieutenant Dunbar and he gets stationed at this post like out in the middle of nowhere and he soon befriends uh, Native Americans in the area and he starts learning the truth about how they were actually treated and I don't want to give any spoilers out. You'll probably have to watch the movie. During the movie they did film scenes like a big buffalo hunt where they used actual real buffalo 
uh, not bison. They, they, <laughs> they used actual real buffalo, and they used real horses, real wolves in the movie, and it just made it so realistic. But obviously they didn't harm any animals. If you do the research, they spent hundreds of thousands of dollars creating these mechanical buffalo that when they're shot with an arrow or they're taken down by a hunter, and fall to the ground it's not real buffalo they actually have mechanical buffalo that slide into a hole or something so no real animals got hurt during the filming of the movie he did have a horse called cisco and that horse remained at 1880 town for many years uh, i believe it was age 33 or 35 when it passed away but the real horse was at 1880 town for a while and they do have a replica of the actual horse when it died, because they didn't, again, they didn't use a real horse, they used this, you know, fake one. Inside the actual barn, it's kind of like a museum. You not only learn a lot of history, like Custer's Battle, they have his boots and uh, different, you know, backpacks, artifacts, arrowheads, all kinds of Native American relics inside the museum, but they have a full section on dances with wolves upstairs, and they have some scenes that are set like the scene, uh, the post I was telling you about where he was stationed at, it's just realistic looking. They have a wolf there and then they have uh, the teepee set up um, where, you know, with a campfire. And then they have the horse scene where, you know, the horse was killed. And, it, and they have pictures and it, it, it tells you a little history of those scenes. But it's just so realistic and authentic looking. You have to see it for yourself. Not only do they have that in the Dance with the Bull section, but they have like... I don't know if you remember old cassette tapes, but they have the soundtrack to the movie. And I remember having the soundtrack on a cassette tape just like it. And like I told you, the VHS tapes, they had that. They had TV Guide. They had all kinds of newspaper clippings and articles and magazines that they collected from that time when the movie came out. And had all the you know articles on Dances with Wolves in them. So you see, when the movie company uh, left during the winter and they were done filming, they had this huge Main Street set still. Well, since Clarence, Richard's father, had, you know, given him relics, let him borrow relics for the movie to make the movie with, they decided to give him the town. So he actually had the town bit by bit moved over there. Just like, like the Red Barn, for instance, it took, you know, thousands of dollars to move this thing and it took over like three days, three days to move it to 1880 town and to keep it intact in the way it is. And I, I don't know, <laughs> that would be a sight to see. A red barn being towed by like a semi truck, you know, down the highway. I can't imagine it. Not only did they move the barn, but they moved other buildings like the hotel that you see in the town. And they say that there's actual markings from, you know, cowboys back in the day in South Dakota. Uh, their spurs would hit and drag on the staircases. And they're still, you know, everything's still intact the way it is, very authentic. They also moved a, a huge church, a school and both of them are set up to where you can view inside like the school has all these desks and everything and amy and i were just like this is so realistic at any moment you know the teacher and the kids are going to come in and they're going to have school that's how that's how realistic it looked outside they also have uh lots more wagons um a, a lot of which were used in the movie dances with wolves as props and they have these train carts with coal in them going into this this uh you know coal mine it's pretty cool during our exploration of 1880 Town, Amy and I also got to visit inside of a realistic looking train station. And we didn't, we couldn't actually buy tickets, but we hopped on the train, of course. They have a full size train there on train tracks that you can get on. We took turns being the conductor. We took turns hanging off the caboose of the train and you can walk inside the train too. It's, it's really cool and it's great for pictures. We also spent a lot of time at the marshal's office, of course, and where I locked Amy up in the jail temporarily for, you know, being a pain in the butt. I'm just kidding. No, she was intoxicated from the root beer from the saloon. Directly across the marshal's office is this huge fire station with, they have like this wagon to pull, I guess they pulled it behind horses or what, whatever, and it's a huge water tank on top. And inside they have the relics, you know, the old axes and all these different devices, which I have no idea what they are. Uh, you know, maybe a real firefighter could tell you. I'm not a firefighter. Outside I had to ring the bell, of course. Amy's like, don't do it. I'm like, yeah, it's part of the whole thing, you know. I rang the bell, it worked, so. I'm not sure if that's the ring the bell or if that's the, the rope they slide down through the chute. 
Yeah, it was a full, pretty cool uh, fire station. Amy and I even decided to rob a bank while we were there. As soon as we left the marshal's office, as soon as she got bonded out of jail, we walked across the street and robbed the bank. Amy and I are about to rob this bank. <laughs> the Gregory National Bank across the street. They didn't want me at the marshal's office and they didn't want Amy for this in talk, so we're gonna go across the street and rob the bank. Excuse me, sir. I need to rob your bank. Excuse me. <laughs> Can you go in that safe and get me some money? I'm not sure that he hears me okay. <laughs> Amy? Huh? I don't think we're getting any money. I don't think so either. Check out this picture of bank. Mm -hmm. The bank ain't got no deposit slips. <laughs> and he locked, he's locked in there. I guess he never leaves the bank. <laughs> All right, Cheryl, don't think that me and Amy don't ever think about you. <laughs> we're, we're going to check out the fire department. So Amy and I walked the entirety of the town and the outskirts. It's really huge. And we, we were just having so much fun that we, we, we were no longer keeping track of time. Um, it no longer mattered how long it would take us to get to our next destination. That's how realistic and, and it was. And how much fun we were having during our visit. Just past the town, we followed a gravel road uphill to a, they have an actual settler's house and a huge tall windmill out there. That's very realistic. On the way up, we, we had bowls with these huge horns and there was a kid that the parents had to come and grab him real quick because the bull was coming over and being very aggressive. So we ended up staying on the right side of the road and then we also stayed on that side of the road when we came back down the hill. There's definitely some rodeo bulls over here. We're staying on the other side of the road because they're quite mean. They tried to attack a little kid over here a minute ago. Yeah, I'm not there. making me mean. Oh, I don't, don't make eye contact. Ooh, I think, one, I, think I made eye contact. Uh, as we continued up, we saw this big animal and this big neck stick up. We're like, what is that? That really doesn't fit here, but I don't know. It, it was a camel, and it was pretty cool to see a, a live camel just walking around in this, this area. Amy also got the stop and uh, pet some ponies, and uh, she loves that. She loves, you know, that kind of stuff. Next, we went to the saloon, of course, because we wanted a drink. We're in a western town, so that's what they did. They drank, right? Amy and I are thirsty. We're walking into town to go to the saloon. Wait, 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 wait for me, wait. Ready? All right, go. No, that's not how you go in there. You push them both open. Come back out. One hand on each, ready? And action. Yeah. Really? So we found the saloon, very cool, awesome looking. And Amy went up the front porch as I filmed her and she entered they have the you know bat wing doors and she only pushed one she only pushed one side open and she walked in i'm like whoa wait you gotta come back out you gotta do it the right way you gotta put a hand on each door open them up slowly as you go into the saloon and then just let them flap back and forth that's how you do it inside the saloon we made her way past all these card tables that were you know where you could sit down and eat and drink but they were actual card tables and they had one set up with some mannequins, some cowboy and cowgirls, and they're playing cards, smoking cigars. I think one had a patch on his eye. It was really cool. And of course, later on, I had to go sit down and try a hand of poker with them. As you pass the, the card tables and you see the grand stage with this grand piano on it, where I guess they give live performances at some time. They didn't while we were there, but that would be pretty cool. We made our way to the bar and they had this old time popcorn machine on the right. 
and the bartender was dressed up in a cowboy getup, and it's like, what it'll be? And uh, we ordered us up some beers. Not actual beers, they don't serve alcohol, but they're root beers. And they're very good, very sweet tasting, great root beers. I was supposed to bring one back to my mom, but uh, I, I drank it. Sorry, mom. I guess you can also rent uh, a cowboy getup outfit if you want to and walk around town. There's a few people doing it. Um, I guess it makes the adventure that more adventurous. All in all, the town, 1880 town, was just a awesome awesome time and amy and i were so glad afterwards that we took the time to you know not just hurry through it but took the time to walk through it and see all the history and the buildings the relics the the atmosphere you know it it was just it was a great time and, and if you're in that area in south dakota i would definitely put that on your bucket list the, the stop and visit 1880 town the town is constantly getting new buildings. So they go from the 1800 to the 1920s era, and not only buildings but relics and you know different knickknack paddywhacks. It truly is a collection of magnificence. Okay, so if you like the video, please hit that like button, give us a thumbs up. It's free. Please, please give us a thumbs up. Leave us a comment if you like the video or have any questions about 1880 town. We'll be glad to answer them. If you'd like to see other videos on South Dakota and learn about South Dakota or find out places that you may want to see if you're in the state visiting, um, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Um, again, it's free. <laughs> subscribe. Hit that subscribe button and uh, subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. <laughs> hit the subscribe button and be hit the bell to be notified of future videos like this one. A special thank you for Motion Array. It is a platform where you can download uh, videos like the opening scene. I also use uh, different motion effects and titles from Motion Array uh, by paying a small subscription. Uh, the link is in the description below if you'd like to use that in your, one of your videos. Also, uh, we like to give a shout out and thank you to Epidemic Sound. I use that pretty much now for all my videos. And during the opening scene, that song, I, I actually play that song in my car and in, in the van. It's just like the old western town, western each song with like whistling going on. It's just like, yeah, I'm in the mood now. If you like the music, like the sound effects, like when he pulls his, you know, the gun out of the holster, that's a sound effect I got from Epidemic Sound. So it's just really cool to play around with the videos and make them more authentic, kind of like 1880 Town. But anyway, thanks for watching. If you'd like to learn more about 1880 Town, I have completed the journal. It is on our website, thetatestravel.com, www.thetatestravel.com. There's also a link in the description below, but I write many journals, many stories. The website is ever growing, so uh, you can also sign up for that for the newsletter if you like and learn more information. So not only watch the video, but uh, read the actual story that I wrote. It's fun and it's free. So go do it. Anyway, Tate is out and we'll see you in the next video. Bye. She's heading to the next saloon. She's shutting the town down. Oh, that's what we need. All this van life. We need a haircut and a bath. All right. Perfect place for RVers. I need a haircut and a bath. Where's the bathtub? I need a haircut and a bath. Where's the bathtub, guys? It's out here. Oh. Shoot, you gotta bathe outside. Okay. Okay, okay. I don't think I'm gonna fit in there. Oh yeah, the bath is this way. Here we go. This. Oh! There we go. <laughs> there we go. Going in the feed store. Yeah, I'd like two bags of feed, please. 
Can I help you, ma'am? Town's pretty cool. You need to come visit. Look, the barn's 14 sides. There's no corner. You can't put your kids in the corner. Anymore.